I'm AJ from the Insights product team, here to introduce you to ROI calculations and customizations. Today, in covering our calculations and customizations, we will incorporate data from our custom columns and add it to pre-existing formulas. We will also combine process and queue information into these formulas, all within the ROI dashboard. Now, let's start working with our dashboards. So let's first talk about incorporating data from custom columns and adding it to a formula. You can add a custom column to a copied business ROI template or to an ROI dashboard that you created from scratch. Today, we will add a custom column to a copy, copied business ROI template. So in order to get started, we will first need admin permissions in order to actually edit the ROI dataset. To navigate to the ROI dataset, we'll click the three dots and then click on configure ROI dataset. Here we can see our processes table, which details all of our process names, the manual time that it used to take a person to complete that process, and the hourly cost, which comes by default. We also pre-added the dev cost column as a custom column. And for today's example, what we will do is we'll add a custom column called number of full-time employees um, to the processes table so that we can calculate the time and money saved if more than one employee actually works on a given process. So in order to add a custom column, we can first click on the add button and then we can type in the name for that column. Then we can press apply and then we can press yes. So now we will be able to see the newly custom column uh, added with all ones uh, by default. Here we could say that if more than one employee worked on this specific process, we could alter that uh, to reflect the number of employees that actually work. So maybe two people actually worked on the AmeriHealth reports, and maybe four people worked on the Aramark DU, um, and so, so forth. So then what we can do is we can save our added information to that custom column, and then use that within our actual uh, formulas on a copied business ROI dashboard. So now what we'll need to do is actually navigate back to our dashboards. Because we have our newly added custom column, the next step is to actually create a copy of this business ROI template so that we can incorporate this information into our already predefined tiles. So in order to actually make a copy of the business ROI template, you will need ROI editor permissions. And then you can navigate to the UiPath templates tab here and click on the copy to my dashboards. So what I'll do is I'll rename this to be business ROI copy adding custom columns. And then I can press save. Okay, so now that we have a copy of our business ROI dashboard, we can modify the pre-existing calculations to also include our FTE custom column. So the next step is to decide which tile we actually want to edit. And so for this purpose, what I'll do is I'll add the custom column to our time saved uh, tile. However, you can follow all of the steps here to add the custom column to any of the widgets uh, shown on the dashboard. So what I'll first do is I'll navigate to the three dots um, here in the upper right hand corner and click on edit dashboard. Then I can hover over the tile that I actually want to edit, click on the three dots and then press edit. Now that the data loads, we can see all of the different, uh, different fields that are being used in order to calculate the time saved. You can see that this is all process specific. So all of our information is coming from the jobs and process manual values tables. So if I expand this, you can see that we employed the number of successful jobs and the total runtime in seconds um, for each specific job. And then in the process manual values, we can see that the process name is being used along with the total manual time that we saw that was entered into that ROI data set table. Now, what we can do is we can add in 
our number of FTEs newly added custom column. And when I press run here, we'll be able to see the added information that we supplied in the configure RI dataset uh, detailed here in this data section. So you can see for that Amera Health reports where we entered in that there were two employees actually working on that, that is captured here. So then our next step is to add this custom column to our already uh, table calculations that are detailing the totals hours saved for all processes. So what we'll have to do is we'll navigate to the in use tab up here where we can see all of the fields that are actually being employed um, previously. And you can see the custom fields here are at the top. So what we'll need to do is we'll, add, we'll need to add the number of full-time employees per process and then we can sum all of those values to get the total hours saved for all processes. So because we need to enter in the time saved per process and add that custom calculation to this specific custom field, we will have to edit this particular field. So in order to do so, we'll click the three dots and then press edit. And then here we'll be able to see the already existing formula that details the amount of time saved per process. And you can see here that we just take the number of successful jobs and then find the difference between the amount of time that uh, a person used to take to complete that job and the amount of time we've saved by automating that and then converting those both to actual hours. So now, in order to add the, actual, the custom column that we just added in the configure ROI dataset table, we can simply click into the formula where it makes sense and start typing number of FTEs because that's what we actually named the custom column in the configure ROI data set. We then can just click on that custom column to bring it into the uh, new expression and then add one more multiplication symbol so that our formula is actually updated to reflect that these jobs may have more than one employee working on them. And if they do, that will be multiplied accordingly. We can then press save and then I will make sure to hide uh, this number of FTEs from the visual visualization just as best practice to make sure that only our total hour save for all processes is captured here. And now that we've added that custom column, we can then press save and see the newly updated value saved onto the actual dashboard. And again, this value is going to be different than the value that we see in edit mode due to the filters already pre-existing on this dashboard. And lastly, in order to save this, we can finally just press save to save the entire dashboard with the newly updated widget. Now that we've covered incorporating a custom column into our ROI dashboard, let's now focus on combining process and queue information into the ROI dashboard. In today's example of adding process and queue information to the ROI dashboard, we will have to create another copy of the business ROI template. So what we will have to do is again, navigate to the UiPath templates tab. And again, you need ROI editor permissions to make a copy of the ROI template. So we'll make sure that we have those permissions and then again, press copy to my dashboards. So now what I'm going to add is information detailing what we'll do today. So I'll say adding transactions. And then I can press save. And again, we'll see that the dashboard um, will be opened and saved to the My Dashboards tab. So now that we do have a copy of our business ROI dashboard, we can modify the pre-existing calculations to also include data from our queues table. And again, in this example, we will cover adding queue data to the time save tile. So we'll follow the same steps as we did before. And we'll first click on the three dots to edit the dashboard. And then we'll edit the actual tile for time saved. Just like the previous example, all of our fields that are being used below here are from our jobs table. So our time saved is only capturing our time saved for our jobs. Now, if we wanted to add our transactions to this equation, 
What we'll have to do is navigate to the queues view. We'll click on the manual time and minutes in the queue name. Then we'll also navigate to the queues view so that we can take the transaction duration in seconds and also the queue item count and use those to determine how much time we've saved for our transactions. So in order to do that, we'll first press run so that we can query the database. Now that we've gone ahead and done that, let's add a new ca table calculation that calculates the time saved per transaction. To do so, we'll take the queue item count and multiply that by the difference in the manual time and we'll divide that by 60 to convert it to hours and subtract that by the transaction duration duration in seconds and again in order to convert that in hours we'll divide it by 3600. Now we can rename the calculation to time save for a transaction in hours. And after we have renamed this table calculation we can press save. If a queue name has an associated process name that is null, it will break our calculations. In order to fix that, we'll add the process name as a filter and set it to is not null. Next, what we can do is adjust our total saved for all processes to also include our metrics for transactions. In order to do that, we can click the three dots and then edit and simply write the addition symbol and then the sum of the time saved for a transaction. And now this can be renamed to our total hours saved for all processes and transactions. We can save that. Let's hide all of the columns besides the total hours saved for all processes and transactions so that that is shown in the visualization. We can click on the gear icon and make sure to hide all of the columns that are already not hidden. Now we can see the total hours saved for all processes and transactions. Lastly, we can save the edited visualization back to the dashboard. And then again, this value will be slightly different uh, based on the filters that are already uh, pre-existing on this dashboard. And lastly, I can choose save to save the updated tile with the new uh, updated dashboard. That is how you create a, and customize ROI calculations within Insights. Stay tuned for more walkthroughs from the UiPath Insights product team.